Hi everybody, this is Vicki and Chuck. Chuck is going to be joining us with a song at the end of this message, which I started receiving on the 9th of March. Today is the 20th of March, 2022. And uh, I'm going to ask you, as I usually do, please pray over this. Ask Father if it's from him. If it is, would you please share it? And if it is, would you please subscribe so that the algorithms will take the messages and the music out farther for a greater reach for God to be able to get these words to other people. And if you haven't subscribed to Chuck's channel, I want to encourage you to do that too. He writes beautiful, wonderful music, and you can find his channel on YouTube at uh, Chuck Adkins Music. Okay, guys, I want to say just very quickly, thank you to everybody who's part of this little corner of Father's Vineyard, whether it's that you come and share uh, your comments or email us or you send in your prayer request for the prayer map on the wall behind us, uh, whether it's that you uh, just encourage us with your words and you're praying for us and uh, and if you're helping us financially be able to survive, <laughs> then we just want to thank all of you. You guys are so precious to us. Um, this message, I'm going to I'm just going to read because I finally sat down and wrote it when I got the rest of it today. I, I wrote it down, including the vision Father had given me and the understanding he gave in that vision, even as he was showing it to me. And But I'm going to start with a dream that he gave me a few days ago. So the message started on the 9th of March. It's going through the 20th, and the dream was a few days in between. And the dream was that Chuck was cutting my fingernails. I hadn't asked him to cut them. They weren't long because I keep them fairly trimmed. He wasn't angry, but he also wasn't waiting for my permission. He had simply taken my hand and started trimming away. He wasn't concerned. I noticed that as he cut, he wasn't concerned about the appearance of the nails, but he was more concerned and not happy with the length of them. Okay, and so here's the interpretation. In the dream, Chuck represented our heavenly bridegroom. And I represented the bride of Christ. The length of my nails represented pride because they were more than they should be. They were longer than they should be. Father is cutting away, this is what he's telling us, he's cutting away the pride of his people when he corrects us and gives us instructions, okay? Okay, now here he began this whole message, like I said, on the uh, ninth, and this is what he showed, said then. He said, my people, my warriors, your enemy has come to destroy you. Get dressed, shake off the remnants of sleep from the night, dress yourselves in battle gear, the hour is here to answer the call. You cannot afford to delay. Delay means deception and death. Delay means distraction. You must be fully alert and awake, mentally, spiritually, and physically. You will not fight this war with your own strength. You will not conquer the enemy with your own strength. You will need the weapons of your warfare that are spoken of in Ephesians 6 and the words in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 where it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, then here's the vision, and I'm just going to read. As I write, Father is showing me that there are those of his people who are running around naked on the battlefield. They are full of zeal, but do not have wisdom. I see people lying on lounge chairs as though they are sunbathing, and the Lord showed me that's pride. Their walks with Father are casual. They haven't understood the seriousness of the war, the reality of the war, and the seriousness of their spiritual condition. They are very easy targets, and I see the demonic foot soldiers of the enemy don't need to do too much to take those careless ones out of action. 
I see individuals so in love with themselves that they cannot stop looking into mirrors. I hear the words mirror, mirror on the wall. And the question that follows, which is, who's the fairest of them all? Which is a reference to the Disney movie, Snow White. I hear that many of God's people are asking this question. I see individuals, brothers and sisters in Christ, who are so in love with themselves that they cannot stop looking into mirrors with great admiration, then constantly showing others what they see in those mirrors. Father's reminding me of the selfies that are all over social media platforms, and he says that these people are no threat to the enemy as they're not looking out to watch for the enemy, but are busy gazing into the mirrors of their lives and their vanity. He says they're easy targets and through their vanity, they will die on the battlefield. They spend more time focused on their mirrors than they do on him and searching his heart for his will in their lives. They are their own number one priority and they don't realize that they're never satisfied with anything less than endless compliments from others, doing all they want to do to make sure they are always the center of attention. They are constantly preening themselves, fine-tuning their appearance, posing for the camera, whether the camera is in the eye of the one who's looking at them, the eye of the beholder, or the camera is their cell phones, or their accomplishments, or their intellect. Their insecurity is pride, but they cannot see it. They only see their need for total acceptance from others as a form of love to try to fill the void that drives them daily. The danger is that they can fall so in love with themselves that they become hardened to anything that doesn't agree with or worship the opinion they have of themselves. They see their mirrors as the weapon that keeps the inadequate feelings at bay. They crave the attention of others and constantly waste their time on finding more ways to get that attention. Okay, they cannot fully engage against the enemy as long as the mirror remains in their hands as they will always be lifting up self instead of God. If they do not put the mirror down and turn with full humility to God and the remembrance of the dust they are, their estate will be with the rest of the wicked because they have become gods to themselves. And Father says, I despise vanity. What have you done to deserve to think highly of yourself? Have you created something that came from nothing? Have you designed your own body or mind? Have you formed the soul within you that cannot be seen nor touched by human hands? Have you given yourself the intelligence, the beauty, or the spiritual gifts that you have? Did you make the food you eat or the water you drink or give sight to your eyes? Why would you be vain if you cannot even do these simple things? Did you make a way to be without sin so that you have no need of a savior? Are you able to be healed physically and spiritually by the command of your own words? Is the body that clothes the soul and spirit inside of your own design and making? Did you bring yourself into being? Did you give yourself the intelligence you possess? Vanity is a stench in my nostrils. Pride and self for any reason is vile in my eyes. If you would be proud of something, let it be me. If you would boast of something, let it be the one who created you, sustains you, and made a way by which you are able to be saved. Let it be in who I am. The attempts of the enemy to keep you bound in pride and hardness of heart are daily battles. The temptation to exalt oneself is the heartbeat that drives many to the broad road to destruction and to hell. It is not always obvious, for the enemy comes as an angel of light, bringing the poison of vanity with great subtlety to those who are not secure in me. His assaults against humanity begin small so that he is more likely to remain unnoticed. He builds on each failure to perceive and to stop the advance of his assault against you. Flesh and the soulish realm come into agreement with the enemy to rise up in pride against your creator as the natural man and woman are at war with the things of God. Even among those who have walked with me for many years, temptation still comes and with the trials, pride and vanity still knocking at the door. 
I'm sorry, let me read that again. Even among those who have walked with me for many years, temptation still comes, and with the trials, pride and vanity still stand knocking at the door. It was the pride, it was pride that took the enemy of your life down. He knows it well and desires to bring you down the same way. Never think you are above the ability to fall. Be careful to remember that when you think you stand, which is in itself pride, you are in danger of falling. You must check yourself daily for cracks in your armor where vanity and pride will swiftly enter. You do this by looking to and at me, not yourself, not your abilities, not your wealth, not your beauty, your accomplishments, your wisdom or your knowledge, not your position, your power or your fame. Look only to me, look only at me. Put the mirror down and look for your approval in my eyes. When you hear the compliments given to you by others, do not drink them in. Instead, bring them to me and I will tell you how I want you to receive them. Thank me for the things I have given you that made it possible for you to be complimented. I will show you when they are from the enemy to build you up in pride, and I will show you when they were given as words of encouragement by the prompting of my spirit to strengthen you. If you keep your eyes on me, you will be able to know the differences and you will grow in your understanding of my love, my ways, and my goodness in your life. So when the temptation comes to cause you to stumble in vanity and pride, you will be better equipped to remain and choose humility. Put the mirror down. Stop looking at yourself constantly. No matter what you were dealing with or going through, no matter how much others tried to promote you, never lose sight of the fact that I resist the proud, give grace to the humble, and draw near to those who walk in humility. And I love you enough to let you fall if you do not repent and return to me. In repentance and rest is your salvation. Repent of the vanity and pride that keeps you gazing at yourself in the many ways you are tempted to do so. Come to me. Come back to me your first love, and I will forgive your sins and give you new eyes to see the wonder of my love for you. I will mend the broken hearts and parts of you that need mending as you choose to look into the mirror of my love for you. Remember, do not apologize for what I say in an effort to look good in the eyes of others. That gives the listener the impression that I don't make the best decisions or don't know the right thing to do, but you do. Do not take credit for what I say or do through you. That is an act of touching my glory and I will not share my glory with anyone. I alone am God. Do not take credit for any natural beauty of body, intelligence, or any gift that you received from me. If you did not create or give it, you are not to take credit for it. You did not create the vessel that you are. You did not design nor install the gifts given to you by my spirit. Be and remain humble. Humility looks good on you. Wear it well. And he had me sign it for him, Father. There you go, guys. Here comes Chuck. <laughs>